we've had many that have missed the class, especially section one. There are many things going on, and we're going to uh, record this for posterity. So today's project is an Excel spreadsheet having to do with a variety of things. You're going to learn flash fill, formulas using the keyboard, more functions, max and min and average, and we'll use the range finder to verify our formulas. Ooh, and more exciting things yet to come, a conditional formatting to cells. Adjusting the column width, we have seen that before. So let's get started. Doesn't that sound just so much smarter than regular voice? Okay, here's what we're going to make. We're going to make this Olivia's Art Supply. And notice the background for this lovely uh, YouTube video. We are saying, go Eagles. That's right. Is it spirit today? today? I saw, blue, I saw lots, lots of blue paint today. I am wearing a, a dark blue bow tie, so that's blue, not black, so uh, that counts. We're going to start from scratch, though. We're going to make Olivia's art supply, and I just, I just feel like going and painting after uh, filling out this spreadsheet. So we're going to start a new spreadsheet, blank workbook, and I'll zoom in a little for you. And we will begin with our title. Olivia's Garden of Art Supplies. I heard there was a preacher once that started preaching with an accent, and since he started, he couldn't stop. And the people just loved him, but it was a fake accent all the way through. Okay, and before I do any typing, I'm going to be diligent, and I'm going to do Control-S, save this before I forget where this goes, and I'm going to save it to my OneDrive section two in my OneDrive. And the file name is going to be your last name. Excel module two or Excel two. Olivia's art. Going to my OneDrive. And now I begin my wonderful worksheet with the title of Olivia's Art Supply. Seeing how the formula appears in the box I'm editing as well as the formula bar. Next, salary report is the name of our spreadsheet. Now, we've thought through this and have decided that our spreadsheet is going to look something like and bring up the little hand-drawn diagram. They drew it on the paper by hand just to see what, they, what their plan was. Here is the plan to have headings across the top. We're going to be merging and centering our title and subtitle. We're going to be listing our wonderful employees, their email addresses, number of dependents they have because that, de that determines some of their taxes. We're going to be calculating formulas after entering the hours work for each person individually and each individual's hourly pay rate. And you will find, as you notice, the higher date of some of these employees that they are guilty of child labor, of breaking child labor laws. But first, let's enter some information and see if we can catch them breaking child labor laws. So we enter their names here, and they've given us a list of the names in a table. But we're first we're going to enter our headings. We're going to put in the employee. They do something here that I would not do. I would have employee first name and employee last name so I can have them sorted by last name or first name. But they, they, they're going to be putting last name, comma, first name in the format. They're going to be storing their email address, their number of dependents, the hours worked. Now, in the book, they have you do an Alt-Enter to make that line go down to a second line. I'm going to show you a better way. I'm going to select that row 3, click in the gray in row 3, and I'm going to 
go to the little details here in the alignment, the alignment formatting details. We're going to wrap right there. Click the wrap text. You're wrapping the text. Now that text is wrapped. And see how nice that is? I can adjust the column width and it will automatically wrap or unwrap the text. Very handy format to know. Remember, all I did was in the rows I had selected, any cells I had selected, I clicked the details and turn on wrap text. W R A P. Oh, I better get the spelling right. Uh, it should. Now, you might have to narrow the column. I went to row, I selected row three by clicking in the gray. And then I went to the alignment details, the format, the little corner, the guy hiding in the corner. And there's the wrap text, text control underneath the alignment tab. Okay, and then once I check that, anytime I type things in there, such as uh, nothing else, uh, oh, I have to go type in the rest of my headings. The rest of my headings are hours, sorry, hours. Got to change that, double click, and make that hours plural. And then come back here to hourly. Instead of hitting Alt Enter to make a new line, since I'm wrapping the text, I just type hours worked, oh, sorry, hourly pay, and it automatically wraps for me. Gross pay. Oh, gross pay. Federal tax. And see how I had set wrapping already. So once when I type it, it will automatically wrap it if the column is narrow enough. So I filled in those headings. I could always come back and adjust the formatting of them, which we'll do later. But now we're going to be entering the names of our employees. So as I have the table of employees here, given on page EX, EX 62, I can now type in my employees' names. And I'm going to go column by column rather than row by row. Well, you can double click on the edge of a column and it'll automatically fit it. Oh, that's weird. It actually shrunk it. But I can just, just grab that and drag it if you want it to fit better. How many have seen Wrath of Khan? Know what it is? Nobody? Anyone know what Wrath of Khan is? No Star Trek fans? Man. We'll have to watch a Star Trek clip here and there. Engage. How many Doctor Who fans? Okay, okay. Okay, so I've got the employees in there. Now I'll go to the dependence column. You're using if you're if you're typing a lot on uh, spreadsheets, it'll be really good for you to practice skills on the number pad. Hourly. 
And as I type in numbers, I don't have to do all the numbers after the decimal point if they're all zeros. We'll come back later and get to format nicely. And you can check the table on page EX62. I might have some wrong. Double check them here. Because if I get these wrong, my other calculations are, come, are going to come out wrong. And I'll. Yep. I'm trying to anyway. I might get a typo here and there. I did deviate from the book by doing wrapping, you know, because. I wanted, wanted you to learn a little bit of rapping for the musical season. Don't worry, once we're done with these numbers, the rest is letting Excel do the work. So this is the hardest part. This is where we do a lot of the work. The only thing left here now is to see these child employees that they have. And because there's slashes in there, it's harder to do the number pad. Yeah. So someone's only four years old. I'm not sure. What are they doing with a four-year-old employee? Another three-year-old. So there I have all my dates in there. I'm going to do one little cal more calculation here while you're filling in your numbers. I'm going to put I'm going to calculate age. Just to show you what kind of laws they're breaking here. I'm going to be making this formula equal to now minus higher date. And turn that into an uh, years. How do I get the? Oh, I have to figure out how many years that is. I forget if that is number of days. Let's see if I can divide that by 360. I think I can divide this number by 360. Oops, messed up my formula there. and put it in the format of a number. There we go. They're hiring five-year-olds. I don't know what kind of company this is. This is telling, this is showing me their, their ages by subtracting the date from the formula now, dividing by 365. You don't have to do that age formula. We'll bring that to the lawyers. So she has she has children doing her art supplies. What kind of an art store is this? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> it's their hire date, not their birth date. <laughs> no, you don't have to do the ages. <laughs> so look at old, old, old Sue Villanova. She's been there forever. Thirteen years. 
Yes. Oh, don't worry about it. What we do, what you could do, if you want to do that now, you can select through those, and over here say date. Click the date choice of the type of uh, thing to show, and it'll come all right. Long date or short date, and we'll be formatting later to clarify that. But that's, I can always choose what what date I'm showing. And well, I can do a long date and have it actually show a completely long format of the date. Because remember, I can choose formatting after entering the actual data. So if you know you've typed in the right thing, remember I can always click on it and see what I actually typed, even though what's showing may be different. Like I can choose that formatting. We'll come back to that. Let's get the calculations right. Now, this is a large table, well, not a huge table, but really all the work we're going to do is calculating these numbers and then we're going to copy down. So we concentrate in getting these calculations right. And before we copy it, we verify that those numbers look right. Then the rest of the work is copy, copying to the rest. So don't even think about the other employees. Let's just get it right for old Joanne here. Her gross pay, the formula, is equal to the hours worked times the asterisk key and then click on hourly pay. Do that again. Yeah, it's up above the 8. Let me do that again. And I'm not typing those numbers. I'm clicking on the cell that that is the address of the cells because I think that's a way better way to get nice, accurate calculation. So I type the equal key. Yeah. Then I click where the hours work for Joanne is. And then I click asterisk. It's shift 8. And then I click the hourly pay. I could have typed D4 times E4, but that's like four more clicks with the keyboard. I have to go find those keys. Just so much more work. And plus, visually, I can confirm, yes, those are the right things to multiply. Now I hit Enter, and then Excel does the calculation for me. And don't worry if I don't see decimals. I can stretch the column out and see more decimals. But I'm letting Excel do the formula. If I want to revisit what that formula is, I just double click and it shows me what that formula is with the helpful coloring of the cells that are being multiplied together. So that visual clue helps to make sure you're getting the right numbers multiplied. Are we going to have to know like, how to do that for the exam? Like, know what the formula is? No, no. The formulas are usually, well, this one is fairly obvious, but we're not. We're not. Ex we'll be telling you what the formula will be for something. Uh, yeah, it's more. Do you know how to do the variety of things? All right, we'll do it again. This is so exciting. We'll we'll do it again. Equal that that cell D4 asterisk, and I could type E4 or click on the cell E4, where I'm calculating the gross pay. Now, I don't know what's going on with Fred. If he's he must be their IT guy. Look how much he gets paid compared to everyone else. Now the tax. Yeah. So the tax now is a special formula we've been given. It's a goofy formula. And the formula is 0 0.22. Oh, oh, I forgot to pipe the equal sign. Equal 0 0.22 times, now this time it's the gross pay minus the number of dependents times a number. So it's 0 0.22 times, then left parenthesis, my gross pay, F4. You could type F4 minus the number of dependents, which is here. Don't type the number 2. Yeah. Click on that. And then it's times 24.32. It's a number the government has given us for calculating their tax. 
So it's a strange formula. We looked up, the government says, here is the calculation of your federal tax. We're taking more than a fifth of what you earn, subtracting a little bit because you have children helping to support the population. We're bringing more taxpayers into the world so we can grow a larger government to control you even more every day and take your money and not have to tell you while we're spending it. Even go pay the Russians to buy uranium for, from us. You ready with the next format? Because once I click somewhere else, it's going to disappear. Now I can hit enter. And now the state tax is a little simpler formula. It's just 4% of gross pay. I don't know where these people are living. What, what, take, what state has only 4% tax? Times gross pay. So 0 0.04 times the gross pay. Notice how we are actually referencing a cell that has another formula in it. So it doesn't matter that there's a formula in here. All that Excel cares about is whatever number shows up here, I multiply 0.4 by it to get the number that goes here. And now tax percent is those two taxes added together over, divided by our total gross pay. So tax percent is equal to, put in parentheses because we're going to be adding two things together that then will be divided. So I'm going to add the federal tax plus the state tax, putting it in parentheses, and dividing it by my total gross pay. So it's basically, it's 0.4 times, 0.04 times my gross pay. Right. Well, that's that's the rules of math. Yeah. The rules of math are you multiply first, then you add and divide. Times gross pay. Yeah, state tax is just 0.04 times gross pay. And I after this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter and to just see all my formulas, remember the wonderful control single quote, control upper left single quote shows you all your formulas and I can well, we have to brag about it. It's just the size of your column that's determining that. So see how these are in these are in parentheses because there's a subtraction in the middle there, and everything in the parentheses gets multiplied by 0.22. And there's all the formulas for you, so I can see all of them. And while I'm here, I can actually put in the formula for net pay, which is equal to, equal to my gross pay, gross pay minus, now they, in the book, they put it in parentheses, the federal tax and the state tax added together. So we're subtracting the total of state and federal tax. That's what my net pay formula is. And on EX65, you see those formulas as well in your book. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Now I can always go control single quote and back and see my back uh, to the numbers that are calculated. But this is a nice way to see all my formulas all together. Control upper left single quote. Left lower left sing, control and upper left. Your other left. Upper left on the see on your upper keyboard there, right next, right below your escape key, upper left. There you go. And that that and control together will switch switch over. Oh, you got the, that was the Windows key, the control key. Control. Control. And single, and then upper left single quote. Add the together. Yeah. Okay. Now hold it down. You're you're doing the Apple key. It's the little C T R L. I am. Look. Oh, is your control key in a different spot than my keyboard? No, because it's the same control. Because it shouldn't. Uh, yeah, keyboard looks like it's messed up. Yes. Oh, okay. Which one comes out as a date? Well, what is it supposed to do that? Okay, exactly. Well, I'm going to pass an extra mic on top of that.
oh, don't worry about that. Here's what I'll show you what to do. Uh, I'll go back to this. If you, if that pay came out as a date, just go up here and click the comma format to put the number in comma format. Like, so somehow it somehow Excel decided that dates go there instead of uh, numbers, but it's only in the formatting of them. Thank you, Mr. Man. All right. I didn't realize Control Escape would do that, so I was thinking you were hitting the Apple key. Yes. Uh oh, some help needed. That's right. Yeah, remember, back to the federal, here's the federal formula for you. There's the federal formula. Remember that that all-important equal sign. If you don't have the equal sign there, Excel first thinks you're typing a number, then we hit the asterisk, it, th it thinks, oh, I don't know what you're doing. I'll just treat this as you're typing in just crazy characters and won't do any calculation. But the equal sign says, Excel, you have a job to do. You have to do this, figure out this formula. So anytime you're getting Excel to do the work, you give it the equal sign. All right, are we ready? Yeah, ready. Okay. Now that we figured it out for Joanne, and we've got it right, let's just verify. Let's see, pay, and I can enlarge that column and see a little more detail. Okay, that makes sense. The tax is about a third. State tax, about 50 bucks. Percent is about, yeah, it's a, a little less than a third. Net pay, subtracting, yeah, it's a little below. Yeah, that, those numbers look right. So I select through all of them. And then I grab the fill handle, copy down to everybody else. Check your numbers. Go right. First of all, do do Joanne. Check check the numbers you got for her. And every every time gross pay, check until you see what's different. And then you'll discover the error if you get something wrong. I might I might have put my formula in wrong. So one by one, check Joanne. And if you find a formula wrong, suppose I discover I had a wrong formula here, I can always grab, select through those again and copy them down again. All right, let's take, take a look at state tax. It should be 0 0.04 times federal times gross pay times F4. 0 0.04 times F4. Is that what you had for your formula? I mean, sorry. My gross pay. Your gross pay. It should be hours work time hourly pay times hourly pay. I did that. Well, then you might have typed in the wrong numbers in hour, these hours worked and hourly pay. 64.4. Oh, that's not 64.25. Sixty-four. Okay, and then you're saying you get a different number if you multiply those two together. What do you get? One, two, six, nine. What are you getting? One, two, six, eight. You're right. Now, as notice, I'm seeing different number of decimals as I stretch my column out. Don't worry about that. That just means Excel is getting it more accurate, and as we show less, it's do, doing the rounding for us. And then my, my pay, my, what about gross? Gross pay. The next one I'll need. That would be federal tax. What do you have the form, for your formula for federal tax? I got the, oh, I want to know that. Oh, that's why you had more numbers than I did. Oh, no. Okay, so I have that, yep, for my 
C4 times 24 in parentheses. You got the parentheses in there too. All right. And then what number did you come up with? And it's important to get it right for Joanne because we're copying the formula down. So we want to make sure they're correct here. Now that we copy down, we're ready to continue. Now, I'm doing it in slightly different order than we do it in the book. Drag through gross pay to net pay. Select. Now let go. Let go. Let go. And now grab the fill handle. And pull her down. You gotta let go. You gotta learn to let it go. Let it go. Then the fill handle kicks in. All right. Now we're down here. We're gonna do the total. We're gonna add some rows here. And in the book, they actually did this first. Actually, there's something else they did in the book first. We gotta get the email addresses in here. And watch this cool feature. I'm gonna put the email address for Joanne in here. Jay Bennett at email.com. Oh, email.com. I forgot email.com. Of course, it wants to send an email now that I double click that com. Now I'll give an mfred at email.com. Now watch this wonderful thing. I'm at this cell right here. I'm going to go to, after putting it in twice, oh, I've spelled Fred wrong. I better get fix that. Or otherwise it's going to mess up. M. Fred, okay. Excel has seen two emails show up. Now I can go to the data tab and do the flash fill. And flash! Look at that. It figured out what you want for email without me having to tell it except entering it twice. It figured out what to put in email for me. Let me do that again. That was so exciting. Let's do that again. I've got email correctly in for two people, and I think, you know, there's a thousand more people. I have to enter emails. Let's let Flash do the work. Going up to the Data tab, Flash Fill, bum da dun 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 Mind it, all of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it does those, go ahead and just delete it. That doesn't matter. Yeah, because we don't, we don't put an email up there for them, so that's good. We don't, we don't need those. So we just go up there and delete them by hand. Now, there's a fancier way that I do it because I'm kind of geeky. I like to draw, write formulas. I could figure out a formula that found the comma and then found the first initial of the last name and then found the last name and put them together and added email.com to the end. But that's a lot of work, fun for us geeks. But if Flash Fill will do it for us, let Flash Fill do it. And it figures out from two that we had incorrectly all the other emails and actually went through the entire column even jumped up to this one. Maybe because I didn't have two words here, it was supposed to say salary report. Maybe that's why it didn't show up there for me. Now, we're ready to now put in a total row that will be calculating total of some things. Just like we did before, we're going to do total, but we're also going to do highest, lowest, and average. All the emails are wrong? The emails are coming out wrong? Yeah. It don't matter. 
I, I would guess that maybe the first two that you had weren't exactly right, and so then it messed up trying to figure out what you wanted. Okay, let me do it again. Show her the flash fill. That is so cool. Okay, now we're going to go down to the filling the max and min and total. Now, it doesn't make any sense to be totaling up the total number of dependents for all my for all my workers, but I, hours worked. That makes sense to make a total of that. So let's go ahead and do the total of those things as well as the total net pay. So I'm going to use, go back to the home tab, I'm going to use the auto sum, but first I'm going to select where I want to put it. So I'm going to click hours worked and select all the way across to net pay. And since those are selected, when I go hit auto sum, it will calculate for every row the, uh, the uh, column sum for each of those. Boom. I'm sorry. Remember how I did it once before and copied? I can just say, put an auto sum there. Show that again. Select through all those from hours, from hours worked to net pay. And then click auto sum. Don't do higher date. You don't want to add up the higher dates. That doesn't that number doesn't make any sense. And if you actually do that, you can just go delete it because it doesn't number doesn't make sense. And then you just click auto sum up here in the wonderful little auto sum automatically calculates it for you. It does it for all of them. Look at that. And we're gonna put that in. Oh, then we're going to put in some other formulas. Let me shrink the email so I can see everything on one page here. We're also going to be putting in the highest and lowest, but this is a little trickier. I want the highest number of dependents. So I'm going to click there where I'm going to put a formula. If I remember the formula, I could type it, but I'm going to go up here and it helps me up here. Click on the little down arrow next to the auto sum and you see average count numbers, max and min. Highest is the same as max. So I click max, and it's selecting all those cells, including the total. Let's go ahead and just select the cells that have employees dependent numbers in them. Max C4 colon C12. Max of only that range. And I see three. Do the same thing for lowest. Select there and click, instead of max, click min, but then select through the range that you want to get the min of. And then hit enter. And then average, average, select through the range that you want to get the average of. And hit enter. And now that we've done that, we can copy those across because we want to get the highest, lowest, and average of all these other numbers, except for, yeah, I think all the other numbers. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Got to grab the fill handle, pull it across. Boom, 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 boom. Question. Did you have a question, Abby? Oh, the highest is max. So max, I'm going to do it the way I would do it. Instead of typing that in here, I'm going to click auto sum, max, select the, only the range of what, what I want to get the max of, only those. Well, for this one, it doesn't matter. For max, it doesn't matter. But for min, uh, I might, and I might always come out zero because remember, a blank cell is treated as a zero. So just so we know what we're max doing the max of, I'd like to treat correct the right, use the right range. Now there is one number that I think I may have wrong here. The total tax that doesn't need that can't that shouldn't be the sum of all my tax percentages. I have to copy the tax percent from uh, Zhao's tax percent 
because that should be the same formula, not a summation. So this guy here shouldn't be a summation. This should be a copy of that formula. That guy right there, he's a special number. He is not a summation, but the calculation. This guy right here. It's going to, although it's in the total row, so how do you make it? I just click that one and pull, fill handle down. Instead of fill handling this way like I did before, left to right, and I get the wrong number, I want that to be calculating the tax percent from the other summations. So this is the tax percent of the summation, the total taxes over every total, the total gross pay of everybody. So that formula there is kind of a special formula. Yep, highest, lowest average, select, let go, yeah, let go, and then grab the fill handle and pull them across. Nice. There you go. Now let's just do some, some, we'll just get started. We have a little time to do a little start of the formatting. Yeah, good idea to save it. We've done a lot of work now. Now the rest of it is just printing it up, and I I don't remember if we're doing a graph for this one. So let's first do what we did last time. We're going to select this one, Merge and Center, using the Merge and Center guy right there. And you get to choose your font and size. Make it as large. Choose whatever font you like here. I think for an arts, an arts supply store, it should be like, like an artsy, like uh, what is that? This curl Z. I don't think this would be the right one for art supply. Maybe Halloween supplies. There we go. There is your art supply font. And this is salary report. I should put in that salary report. Isn't that what it said? Yeah, salary report. I'm going to merge and center that. And increase the font size, clicking the up arrow, A with the up arrow on top of it. And I'm going to choose another artsy font. Choose whatever artsy font you would like. Because Olivia likes to have artsy tax reports. And we're going to select a background color for that as well. So choose over here under the fill after selecting those two cells. Choose a fill, something, an artsy fill. In the book they choose kind of a dull purplish. You can choose any other color except for white. And also, we're going to put a nice thick border around it, going to the font borders, thick outside border. Yeah, click both of them. Otherwise, you get the border around just the one that you clicked. Right up here. And you can even go further down. If you want to explore a little bit, you can actually... Change your line style of the border. Make it a wild border. Oh, I'm not sure it comes out right. Yeah, thick outside border. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't quite come out nicely when you're right on the edge. Oh, it gotta be one that way. Yep. You can choose your color of your border. It can be two different colors. You want to try it? Yeah. If you want to make them two different colors, I'll let you. All right, we'll save this, and we'll do the rest of the formatting next time. We're going to be making this header one style. We're going to be making this total style.
So how do these guys come together? If you want to make them all, both the same color, just select them both and then choose a color. Do you want them to both be the same background color? Okay, you don't have to. As long as you know how to make the colors, you're good. And then the heading, heading one? This is heading one style, and then there's total style there. We'll be doing this, we'll be going over this next time too. So we're going to make a total style, a heading style, and we're making those bold. We'll be going a lot more formatting with colors next time. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see you next time on the episode of Fundamentals of Computing. Have a wonderful day.